What's up everyone, welcome back to another What If video. Today's one is a bit different, and you might notice that I'm uploading on Wednesday for a specific reason. It's April 1st, April Fool's Day. So I wanted to try something different, and have a little bit of fun, which I'll be doing by doing a What If that isn't really too serious. A couple of people have asked me to do a What If about Goten training like Goku, so you might be wondering why is this an April Fool's topic? Well frankly, I do like the idea of Goten training like Goku, but it would be a very short what-if scenario because he's not in too many arcs. It would only affect things from the Buu Saga onward, and if I looked at this in a kind of realistic way, I honestly don't know if that would give Goten enough time to shine, so I decided to do it in a more sort of absurd way. And by training like Goku, I mean he actually does train exactly like Goku, which will not only escalate things much quicker, but it creates for a kind of comedic scenario, which is perfect for April Fools. For this video, I'm going to set a like goal of 3,000 likes, so be sure to drop a like if you want to see more. And without further ado, let's see what would happen if Goten trained like Goku. We're actually going to begin in the middle of the 7 year time skip. At this point already, we know Goten has Super Saiyan, and he's actually pretty strong on his own. But his strength isn't really refined, he didn't even learn to fly until Gohan taught him. And in terms of technique, I'm sure he's pretty inexperienced. Besides the casual training that he does with Chi Chi. And that's where we'll start out. One day he's doing his normal training with Chi Chi, like we kinda saw in the Buu Saga. And this training gets him thinking. Is there a more effective way for him to train kinda like his father? Of course, he didn't know anything about Goku, he hasn't even seen him yet. But Chi Chi would be able to point him in the right direction. Although she wouldn't really want Goten training too much, it seems her child's a delinquent already because he can go Super Saiyan and have blonde hair. So it's not even worth the effort trying to prevent him from doing it. She tells him about Master Roshi, Goku's former teacher. She's not sure how much Master Roshi could help right now, but maybe he can point Goten in the right direction. So Goten does go off the Kame House, taking the Nimbus Cloud because he still can't fly. Roshi's actually pretty shocked to see Goten show up. He looks exactly like Goku did as a kid and it's giving him some serious deja vu. Goten would ask Roshi for training, and I'm sure Roshi would be able to provide this. The issue here is that Goten's already way out of Goku's league, at least from when he was a kid. Sure, Roshi's probably gotten stronger himself and has some new techniques for training, but really he doesn't have anything to do to improve Goten's strength because he's already strong enough. Even disregarding Super Saiyan, Goten is surprisingly powerful for his age. He'd most likely be visiting Roshi from time to time, learning some martial arts techniques and refining his skill. But in terms of power, like I said, he's not really going to be able to do anything for Goten. He could send Goten off to Korin, but that might not help either. And he knows Goku trained with Kami, but there is no Kami anymore, it's Dende, and Dende might not have the expertise to actually train Goten effectively. So that basically brings Goten back to where he started, the closest option to him and the best option for him to train with, his brother. Gohan of course would want to train Goten. Not only will this improve Goten's strength, but it would improve Gohan's a bit as well. This probably happens a little earlier than normal, before the whole Videl thing. And Gohan's pretty amazed to see how skilled his brother is, that training with Roshi actually kind of helped. And it's a good thing that Goten's pretty strong right now, because now we head into the Buu Saga. So in the Buu Saga, we're not going to really see too much change until we get to the Room of Spirit in Time, where Goten and Trunks are training in there to prepare to fight Buu. Instead of Trunks being the stronger one this time, it would be Goten. And their training in the Room of Spirit in Time would be much more beneficial, increasing the strength of both of them. But still, Goten remains ahead. Their training does get cut short though, and it's good that they were training as rigorously as they were. Because now, Piccolo has no choice but to lead Buu into the Room of Spirit in Time. And it appears Buu is going to face off against Goten and Trunks. They've already been fusing before, so they know the dance. And the thing is, Gotenks is actually stronger as well. Their powers need to be equal to fuse, so this would mean that Goten would have to lower his power to Trunks' level, instead of the other way around. It's a minor increase, but it does mean that Gotenks will see a slight increase in power. But it doesn't end there. After their effective training, Gotenks will be even stronger now. Plus, the half Saiyan fusion will have a trick up his sleeve that he wants to show off. Goten and Trunks fuse into Gotenks, promising Buu that this fusion will be the one to defeat him. Buu is uninterested, but then Gotenks starts fighting him, and he gets a taste of how powerful this fusion is. While Gotenks' increase in power might be minimal, it's still beneficial, and Gotenks is a much more skilled and serious fighter. Like I mentioned, that training with Roshi helped Goten, molding him into a more disciplined and serious fighter. That skill of course translates over to Gotenks, who not only has higher martial arts prowess, but is actually more focused now and probably won't let the power get to his head. Well, hopefully. The fight starts out pretty normal, but Buu is at a disadvantage. Gotenks turns up the pressure, even going Super Saiyan 2 for a bit, which amazes Piccolo because he didn't know that they could do this. Yeah, we haven't seen Goten and Trunks go Super Saiyan 2, but Gotenks actually briefly did, and it would be an efficient way for him to fight. However, it seems that they still can't defeat Buu, he just keeps regenerating, although they're doing some real good damage to him. 
They wanted to save this for the end and have a flashy finish, but really they have no other choice right now. Gotenks creates a galactic donut to trap Boo, in order to give him time to transform. His key begins rising immensely. His eyebrows disappear, his hair grows. After an explosion of power, Gotenks has transformed into Super Saiyan 3, much like Goku did earlier. Piccolo is obviously speechless, as is Boo, who's actually kinda scared right now. With the more disciplined Goten side of Gotenks, he's prepared to defeat Boo. Boo finally breaks free from the Galactic Donut, but it's no use. This powered up Gotenks, especially in Super Saiyan 3, is too much for him. Gotenks brings out all his flashy techniques, but he uses them for a good purpose, because they'll actually do some damage. His Super Kamikaze Ghost, maybe a Galactic Donut here and there, and to finish it off, a Daidai Missile Barrage. Yeah, he has some pretty weird names for his techniques, but let's ignore that. Because it actually does the trick. Every single molecule of Boo is erased. Gotenks didn't hold back at all. And it's a good thing too, because now the fusion runs out and the two kids defuse. It's a good thing that this happened now and not while they were fighting Boo, because otherwise they might have been screwed from defusing. Piccolo still is speechless, as Goten and Trunks celebrate the victory. Goku's been watching from the world of Kai's, as Gohan is still undergoing his ritual. Shin and Kabito are watching as well and they're amazed to see what happened, as Elder Kai and Gohan get the news as well. The ritual was actually benefiting Gohan and he still does get his ultimate form, although since he ended the ritual early he might be a little bit weaker than normal. But that's fine right now because he doesn't need to fight Boo. Using the Kai Kai, Shin brings everyone to Earth to see what's happening. Goku congratulates the two kids and he's proud that Goten was able to help. There is one big issue though. They actually don't know that Dende's alive and that there's still Dragon Balls on Earth, so they assume they're pretty much screwed and everyone on Earth is dead right now. Not quite. Goku, or even Shin for that matter, can go to New Namek and get those Dragon Balls. They plan to use those Dragon Balls to revive Dende because they still don't know he's alive. And they also don't know that at this point the Namekian Dragon Balls have been upgraded so they can revive multiple people at once. They do travel to New Namek and they get some really good news once they find this out. Not only is Dende still alive, but these Namekian Dragon Balls could actually do the trick. So they're used to revive everyone on Earth, at least the good guys that were killed during the last few days. Vegeta also gets brought back as well from this wish, and they don't really have anything else to wish for. Well, there is one more wish to be made. Goten wants to wish for Goku to come back to life. Goku decided to stay dead, but it appears that Earth is still at risk even without him there. Plus, he kinda does want to come back, and everyone else wants him back as well. It's a bit of a massive situation, but they do end up wishing Goku back, so he's alive as well. With no further wishes, Purunga disappears, and the Buu saga ends very happily. You're probably asking, this seems pretty grounded so far, where's the crazy stuff? Well, we're gonna get to that, cause now we head into Battle of Gods. This part of the story starts and ends pretty much like normal. Beerus comes to Earth, they find out about Super Saiyan God, and the ritual is done on Goku. What changes is how it ends. Soon after, Vegeta goes to train with Beerus, and of course Goku finds out and he ends up going as well. And this what if is about Goten training exactly like Goku, so this is the perfect opportunity. He's gonna actually go along with Goku. Well, too bad for Chi-Chi, because it turns out that Goten isn't gonna be studying here. Sadly for her, this is an April Fool's what if. So my apologies to her. Goten ends up going to Beerus' planet with Goku, and Goku's glad to bring him along. This not only surprises Beerus and Whis, but Vegeta as well. Damn, he should have taken Trunks with him. Bulma probably wouldn't have allowed that anyways, he's surprised that Chi Chi even allowed Goten to go. But he doesn't question it because he also knows that this is an April Fool's what if. So apologies to him too because he doesn't get to bring Trunks along. I'm sure Vegeta's very mad at me which is kinda scary. Just look at that death stare. Before Vegeta hurts me, let's move on with the story. So as you'd expect, Goten trains pretty much like Goku and Vegeta here. He is pretty far behind, but with training he is actually able to get stronger and his technique improves. He's not gonna be Goku or Vegeta level, but he is powering up dramatically. He is a hybrid after all, and his potential must be huge like his brother. So he rapidly sees some growth. Beerus is actually pretty shocked to see this as well. Somehow this kid is really strong, and he wonders. He is a Saiyan after all, and he can go Super Saiyan, so maybe he'll be able to go Super Saiyan God. Vegeta was able to do it without a ritual, so Goten might be able to do it as well. I'm sure that by this point, Goten has been able to access God Key. He has been training like Goku and with Goku, as well as Vegeta and Whis and Beerus. So with all those people around him, the God Key would eventually be infused with his own. And it would probably take some time, but here's where the April Fools really kicks in. Goten unlocks Super Saiyan God. Yup, it's one of those what ifs. Goku is amazed to see that his son is able to do this. I mean when Goku was his age, he was just in tournaments doing some normal martial arts. But Goten's a god at this age. Beerus and Whis are pretty impressed as well. They weren't sure that a kid would be able to do this. 
Luis was able to figure out that this is an April Fool's what if though, so he's aware that anything can happen, which is good for him because now he has another godly student. Of course, just because Goten isn't Super Saiyan God doesn't mean he's on the level of Goku or Vegeta, but it is helpful for him to have this form. The three of them continue training, and eventually, we're gonna get into Resurrection F. Oh yeah, that's where this is going. Frieza ends up getting revived by the Frieza Force, and he's sensed by everyone on Earth, and he ends up arriving. The first encounter with the Frieza Force goes pretty normal, as the Dragon Team fends them off. The only two changes that I see happening here is one, Trunks might be involved because he might be doing some training on his own, and two, Gohan might also be a little bit stronger because he could get a little bit more motivated to train, but I don't see him getting a huge increase in power. Let's just say he's pretty much the same as he was in Battle of Gods. He could still go ultimate, but in terms of strength, he hasn't really increased at all. Which is still better than Gohan barely being able to go Super Saiyan at this point in the story. Anyways, let's continue. After the army is defeated, Frieza prepares to fight. Even in this final form, Frieza is a lot stronger now. Gohan is barely able to fend him off, and he's basically acting as a beacon right now by exposing his key, in order for Goku to sense it somehow. This ends up working, as Goku teleports to Earth with Goten and Vegeta. This is the first time everyone's seen Goten in a while, and he's changed a lot. Why was he training with a god of destruction anyways? That's really weird for a kid. Now with these three here, Goku begins his fight with Frieza, which eventually turned into Vegeta fighting Frieza. Vegeta gets the win, and Frieza is on its knees. Thankfully, Earth is saved this time. Frieza is about to blow it up, but someone intervenes to help. I gotta try to not laugh while saying this, but Goten goes Super Saiyan Blue and eradicates Frieza with a Kamehameha. Yep. Well, that's great. Earth is saved now, and everyone can continue peacefully. Except Goten doesn't return to Beerus' his planet, he actually stays on Earth because Chi-Chi hasn't seen him in a while. He got some really good training in any ways because now he can go God and Blue, which is just astounding to everyone else. Besides Goku and Vegeta, Goten's basically the strongest one here, which is kind of scary. I mean, a teenager having all that power is really weird. And while everything's normal on Earth right now, eventually Shampa and Vado show up in Universe 7. Naturally, after Resurrection F, we do have the Universe 6 tournament. So what's the team going to be like here? Well, there's no Boo here because he's dead, so he's not even considered as an option. The obvious picks would be Goku, Vegeta, and Goten. And I would say Manaka is still here as well, so he gets on the team. Getting Manaka there would give Goku and Vegeta an extra push to be more motivated. And I guess that kind of rubs off on Goten as well. And as for their fifth member, I feel like they'd still choose Piccolo. So really, the team is the exact same, except Boo is replaced by Goten. Which, that's probably the most grounded thing in this entire scenario so far. But even though we were a bit sane for once, well, we're going to the complete opposite end of the spectrum and going insane right now. Because before the tournament, Goku and Vegeta do want to train in the Room of Spirit and Time. And remember, this what if is about Goten training exactly like Goku. So, uh, you see where I'm going? He's gonna go in the Room of Spirit and Time with them. Normally, this would be kind of a big deal because he's using three years of his life. Chi Chi probably wouldn't take too kindly to that. But I guess in this timeline, she might be a little bit more open to it because she knows that Goten's gonna want to grow up to be a fighter, and he could probably just enter tournaments if he wants to be successful and make money, and he'll be the next Mr. Satan. And also the fact that this is an April Fool's what if, so, so pretty much anything goes as it kinda exists in verse already. And you know, both Goten and the Room of Spirit and Time exist in the universe, so why not combine the two? So yeah, he goes in there with them. Since they do have an extra training partner who's really strong, the three years in there are actually pretty effective. But obviously, Goku doesn't just train with Super Saiyan Blue here, because it was here that he discovered Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. And like I said, this what if is Goten training exactly like Goku, so what does he do? He asks to learn Kaioken. So given the fact that they have three years in here, I feel that's more than enough time for Goku to teach Goten the technique. Sure, he's not going to get really good with Kaioken right away, and he probably won't be able to combine it with Super Saiyan Blue that quickly. Also, the fact that Goku probably isn't the one who could teach this technique the best. That would obviously be King Kai. But Goku is able to teach it to him. This does cut into Goku's training time a little bit, and it causes Vegeta to actually stay away from learning it. He wants to focus purely on himself, and even though Goku would just as easily teach him as well as Goten, Vegeta knows how intensive the technique is, and especially combining it with Super Saiyan and Blue, that doesn't really seem his style. He'd rather just train with Super Saiyan and Blue as is right now. So while Kakarot wastes his time teaching his son some stupid power boosting technique, Vegeta just wants to improve Super Saiyan and Blue as is. Three days pass on the outside, and they exit the Room of Spirit and Time. And the thing is with Goten, he'd probably still look the same here, because even though he did age three years, he's only going to be 15. But maybe when this what if ends, he'll get older, because I know a lot of you probably do want to see that. So the first round ends up being Goku versus Batamo, and that goes pretty much normal, there's nothing that changes. Followed by Goku vs. Frost, which also goes normal. Which is then followed by Piccolo vs. Frost, which also goes normal. Not really an interesting start so far. 
Here's where things change a bit. Vegeta does want to take Piccolo's place like normal here, but instead Piccolo insists that Goten should try out here. And Goku agrees too because he does want to see how Goten will perform. And as for Goten himself, he'd probably love to do this. As for Manaka, he doesn't really care, he's just terrified. So that leaves the vote 3 to 1 to put Goten in, and if Goten does get knocked out, then Vegeta gets to go in next. Although a little disappointed, he does accept this. So Goten's next against Frost. And now that Frost is fighting without poison needles, Goten's gonna fight him to the fullest and use some of his flashy techniques to take him out. Goten goes blue right from the start, showing off his awesome power. It feels good to be in a fight for once that doesn't require him to fuse with someone, or one that just ends instantly like Golden Frieza. Goten moves quickly, trying to trip up Frost, doing hit and runs with energy attacks, as Frost gets more and more angry and damaged. Just as Frost unleashes his anger and goes after Goten, he receives a powerful kick to the stomach. He's able to catch his footing, but quickly, Goten then appears behind him. And while Frost is off guard, he gets hit by a massive Kamehameha, which launches him out of the ring. Goten takes the win. Next is Goten vs. Megeta. Now of course, Goten wouldn't be able to hurt him here, but then they figure out the weakness of the Metal Men being insults. And you know, kinda like Ten Shinhan in the Moro arc, I feel like Goten might have a little bit of trouble coming up with insults here. Thankfully, he's friends with Trunks, who is more adept at this, and he could probably just try and think of what Trunks would say in this situation. After throwing out a few insults that don't work at all, one eventually gets under Megeta's skin, or his shell, or whatever that is. And Megeta just forfeits. That was surprisingly not so difficult, and it was a good thing that he was able to think of something. Goten then faces Kaba next. Both of them immediately intrigued at the prospect of other Saiyans. While they did meet before the tournament, it is pretty interesting because Goten is a hybrid which is something Kaba has never seen before. And Goten's pretty amazed to see a Saiyan from another universe. As the fight starts, Goten immediately goes Super Saiyan and attacks Kaba, and Kaba immediately screams out of fear. I mean all of a sudden this kid just turned blonde, and became so much stronger than before. He is completely lost right now. Even though he did take a powerful punch from Goten, Goten stops and waits for Kaba to get back up, asking him why he didn't go Super Saiyan. And of course, Kaba doesn't know how to go Super Saiyan. Goten's a little shocked to hear this, and he's not sure how Kaba can get it or if he could even get it that quickly. Because Goten doesn't even know how he got it, he just did it one day without even knowing. And while Kaba would want to learn it, Goten has no way of teaching him. But because this Kaba guy seems nice, Goten powers back down to base and they fight like that. Kaba was able to hold his own pretty well against base Goten, I mean he was able to do the same against Vegeta, but I feel like Goten still would have the upper hand and eventually take the win here. But the two of them did have a respectable fight. Sadly, this obviously means Kaba doesn't know Super Saiyan, which potentially could have some effects later on during the Tournament of Power. Or maybe I'm gonna actually do something different here. I feel like this is a common trope in some of my videos where Kaba doesn't end up luring Super Saiyan, and that means during the Tournament of Power all of the Saiyans from Universe 6 get eliminated really easily. But things aren't really the same here. He sees Goten, this kid who's so strong and able to do things like this, as well as accessing levels beyond Super Saiyan. So in actuality here, Kaba may be more motivated to train, seeing if he can unlock Super Saiyan himself and probably even higher levels. So during the Tournament of Power, we might get to see a stronger, more refined version of Kaba if he figures this out. With four of Universe 6's members eliminated, that only leaves one left. Hit the Assassin. Alright, figuring out this guy as an assassin is a little bit terrifying for Goten, but nonetheless he still feels confident, and although he hasn't broken it out yet, he still has Super Saiyan Blue Kao Ken in reserve, and maybe if he uses it in short bursts he will be able to take hit out. He starts by attacking in God, and it pretty much does nothing. No issue though, time to go into Blue. And Blue also doesn't really accomplish much. Somehow Hit is able to outspeed him, and it turns out that he can actually manipulate time in a way that lets him get an advantage. So no matter how fast Goten is, Hit is always going to be ahead of him. Goten takes this as a challenge, and tries to even go into Kaioken for a bit. But since he's kind of inexperienced with the technique, and he can't really do it at too high of a level, it does catch Hit slightly off guard but he is able to knock Goten out. And that leaves the team in kind of a tough spot. If Goten can defeat him with blue, then how are they supposed to fight him now? Vegeta's up next, and he has to think of a strategy. It seems pure power isn't going to work, and the thing is he doesn't even have Kyle Ken to stack on top of blue, so he can't even rely on that. Knowing how good of a strategist Vegeta is, I feel like he's going to come up with a new kind of plan here. Here I'm going to take two bits of inspiration from the manga. For one, Vegeta's going to act kind of like Goku and pace himself, trying to figure out how Hit fights so he could find a way to work around it. And by pacing himself, that's where my second inspiration comes in. While Goku and Goten were focused on working on Super Saiyan Blue Kyle Ken, I did mention earlier that Vegeta is going his own route, and is focused on improving God and Blue as is. 
he's found better ways to preserve his energy and has just improved both the forms overall. As he figures out his strategy, he paces himself during the fight, going Super Saiyan and then into Super Saiyan God. He teaches himself how to predict Hit's movements and is able to attack before Hit can make a move, essentially nullifying the time skip. As Hit shows off more of his power and tries to improve himself, Vegeta is still keeping up. And then eventually, he attacks while in Super Saiyan God, but switches into Super Saiyan Blue right after, catching Hit off guard with a very powerful attack. He begins showing off the true power of Blue, and completely overwhelms Hit at this point, not giving him a chance to recover or find a way to counterattack. Hit's pretty beaten up, and he's about to attack Vegeta, who once again lunges at him in God. And this is when Hit finally notices it. Vegeta is attacking God, but switching to Blue at the very last second. Unfortunately, it's too late for Hit, as he's knocked out by Vegeta. And even though he knows Hit isn't fighting at full power, I don't think he'd be like Goku here in forfeit, he'd probably just want to go to the end and get the victory. And with that, Universe 7 wins the tournament. Beerus is generous with his wish like normal, and following all of that, everyone goes back home like normal. This gets both Goten and Goku to realize something. Maybe Blue Kaioken isn't really the way to go. Sure, it's a great way to increase their power temporarily, and it might be very useful in future fights. But as demonstrated by Vegeta, pure power isn't always the way to go. Which is odd considering that's kind of Vegeta's strategy. But after this, what happens with Zamasu? Well, Zamasu's been watching this all happen, and he is pretty pissed. Everyone was making a mockery of god powers, even this little kid running around and doing it, and somehow this kid was freakishly strong. Even though Vegeta did get the win in the end, Zamasu made assumptions like the average speed watcher. And thought Goten was stronger just because he showed Blue Kaioken, without looking any deeper into the fight. So he consults Zuno, who apparently knows everything, and Zuno tells him that this is a joke what if, so that gets Zamasu curious. If this is a joke what if, that means he should body swap with Goten. Yes, Goten Black is actually going to show up in this scenario. I mean, Goten is pretty freakishly strong right now. Goku's glad that he's on their side because otherwise that would be pretty terrifying to have him running around. It's great that there's not an evil Goten going around everywhere destroying stuff because he hates mortals or whatever. But soon after, Trunks comes back from the future, and apparently, there is an evil Goten running around destroying things. Oh, I guess Goku's not so lucky after all. Well, they think it's Goten. They're not sure how he'd exist in the future because he supposedly wasn't born there. But it turns out everyone's theories in the fandom were true. Goten Black is real, and he's here to mess some stuff up. And as Trunks arrives in the past, Goten Black decides to follow him there as a prank, blowing up his time machine in the process, also as a prank. He even does a little laugh when he does it. I mean, he thinks it's a pretty funny joke. Oh yeah, that doesn't really look too good because now Trunks doesn't have a time machine to get out of here. But worse of all, they have Goten Black standing right there, menacingly. Goten confronts his evil self, surprised to see that he looks like this in the future. Why'd he cut his hair so short? Well, I guess that looks better than the Goku hairdo he has right now. He might change that sometime. Maybe he'd grow it out a bit longer though. That's not important. Right now, he has to assert his dominance as the best Goten. And he makes a passing comment about how this guy has a weird earring and ring. Why is he wearing jewelry like this? And Beerus and Whis pick up on that. Why is he wearing an earring and a ring? Ah, but those are not just any earrings or rings. That's a time ring and a Patara earring. And that means this guy's probably related to Kai's in some way. Whis just sighs in disappointment because he knows who's probably responsible for this. Anyways, Goten looks Goten Black straight in the eye. Immediately, he goes into Super Saiyan Blue and pimp slaps Goten Black once, thinking he could somehow withstand this, but he can't. Black is immediately knocked unconscious from this and falls towards the ground. Oh, that was kind of easy. I guess now they can apprehend this guy and find out what's going on. Carefully, they edge towards him. As evidence, Whis decides to take his Patara earring and his time ring. Then, out of nowhere, a portal opens, and the time ring slips out of Whis' hand into the portal, leaving Goten Black behind. Meanwhile, in the future, Zamasu patiently awaits for his other self to return, but it seems now he's stuck in the past and is apprehended, unknown to Zamasu. Now let's cover a bit of Goten Black's history. So of course, after the Universe 6 tournament, Zamasu decided he wanted to steal Goten's body, but this isn't something he did immediately. Eventually, he was able to get his wish, but something was wrong. What the hell happened to Goten? It seems he forgot about the rapid aging that Saiyans have, with it probably being somewhat similar for hybrids. So by the time he stole Goten's body, Goten had already gone through his much needed age up that should have been super in the first place. Wink wink. Then Goten Black recruited Zamasu from another timeline, who became immortal. And you know what follows next, they just go around terrorizing whoever they can, specifically in Trunks' timeline. And that leads us to where we are now. Zamasu is patiently awaiting the return of Goten Black, not knowing he's actually stuck in the past right now. Well Beerus and Whis know what they're doing. They take Goku, Goten, and Goten Black, dragging them all the way over to Universe 10. Whis would normally remain neutral, but since Goten Black is going across space and time willy-nilly, he kinda has an obligation to intervene here. 
putting Goten Black in some sort of containment while he's unconscious. The magnitude of this situation is very serious, so at the very least he will help imprison this guy. They all arrive in Universe 10, suspecting Zamasu has something to do with this, and immediately he's terrified. First of all, it shows him that this plan that he was thinking of, yeah, it would be pretty screwed up and it wouldn't work. So he should probably reconsider, but also he's terrified because unknowingly, another version of him from another timeline angered a god of destruction in this timeline, and now he's facing the consequences. He pleads to not be destroyed. But after talking it through, everyone's able to figure out that this Zamasu actually did nothing wrong, at least not yet. But he does tell everyone he did have some thoughts about doing a plan like this. And what's even scarier is Goten Black eventually wakes up and sees Zamasu, only confirming the fact that Zamasu's somewhere in Trunks' timeline now. Goten Black then quickly realizes this isn't his Zamasu, and he's not in his timeline or even the universe that he was in before. He's in prison and he's screwed. With Zamasu now on the path of turning good again, he and everyone else see what kind of information they can get out of Goten Black. Thankfully, the damage to the time machine wasn't too severe, and within a few hours or so, it's back up and running. Vegeta is of course going to join Trunks when they head into the future, with Gohan joining this time as well. He's still a little schmizzed about not being able to fight in the Universe 6 tournament, so at least here he might be able to test out his powers. And help out a bit. The three of them head into the future, and surprisingly it seems calm. Of course there's no Goten Black going around, but then they're able to see. Zamasu is waiting for Goten Black's arrival, and after sending some new energies appear, he and the group meet. He asks what they did with Goten, and they actually don't know. But to piss Zamasu off, Vegeta says as far as he knows right now, Goten Black is either imprisoned or dead. And now they just need to take care of Zamasu. He knew it was foolish for the other Zamasu to not wish for immortality. But no big deal. Zamasu feels like he could handle this alone. He explains who he is and why he's here. And his plan, just as they suspected. The three of them begin fighting him, expecting a powerful enemy, but really, Zamasu's power isn't anything too crazy. They actually think they were able to kill him because he seemed to completely vanish, until they see him regenerating. It turns out he left out one small detail. He's immortal. No matter what they do, he can't be killed, and his plan will continue. Well, looks like they're screwed. At least for the time being. There has to be some way to work around this. But clearly, right now, they don't have that option. At least not yet. They do have one option right now, though. Retreat. No way they're sticking around here with a guy who's immortal. That right there is just bad news. Thankfully, with the three of them there, even if they can't kill Zamasu, they can at least distract him and stun him temporarily. Before he even knows it, Zamasu is blind. A solar flare comes out of nowhere from Trunks, and jeez does it hurt his eyes. They make a run for the time machine, hop in, and get away. It feels good to be safe. They're back in the main timeline, and everything is just, well, it's just swell. At least for a few minutes until Zamasu figures out where they went to and travels there using his time ring. Remember how Goten Black pranked everyone before by coming back to the past? Well, Zamasu's gonna do the same. And just like Goten Black before him, he blows up the time machine. Apparently when Goten Black did it, it didn't do the job last time, but here, Zamasu actually destroys it completely. <laughs> Fun little prank. Zamasu will be sure to include this in his Don't Time Travel at 3am challenge on YouTube. Good stuff. Zamasu knows he's not really a match in terms of power, but he can at least go around destroying stuff just to annoy everyone. I mean, what are they gonna do about it? Kill him? Psh, they can't. Ah, these stupid mortals. They all try and fight Zamasu, but they can't do anything. He just keeps causing havoc. They overpower him, but Zamasu can fight for however long he pleases, and he can't get hurt. But then, Trunks gets an idea. In this timeline, they have something that he doesn't have in his own. What, Goku? Well, yeah, that's not what he was thinking of, though. And as a matter of fact, Goku's not even here. He's with Zeno right now. Anywho, the thing Trunks was thinking of was actually Dragon Balls. And you know what Zamasu used to become immortal? Well, it was Super Dragon Balls, but still, Dragon Balls. So maybe they can just use Earth's Dragon Balls and make him not immortal. It might not work, but it's worth a shot. While Gohan and Vegeta continue fighting Zamasu, Trunks retreats. He's able to gather some people like Piccolo and Krillin, as they all head to Capsule Corp. They need to get Dragon Balls as quickly as possible to stop Zamasu. Together, anyone who's not fighting Zamasu is searching for Dragon Balls. And with so many people working together at once to find them, they eventually do get them pretty quickly. So they've got three wishes now to make. Shenron is summoned and their first wish is to remove Zamasu's immortality completely. And I feel like Shenron would probably be able to do this. If he can grant it, he could probably take it away from anyone if he wants. There is the one rule about Shenron not being able to kill someone that's stronger than his creator, but he's not killing Zamasu. He's just altering something about him. Removing immortality isn't what will kill him, it's Vegeta and Gohan that will. So yeah, he does this. And their next two wishes are pretty obvious. Revive everyone that was just killed by Zamasu, and reverse all the havoc that he caused. Far away while Vegeta and Gohan are holding him off, they all notice the sky turns black, 
and then Zamasu feels a little weird. He doesn't feel so good, but he wasn't Thanos snapped. Shenron just took his immortality and threw it away. And although this wish won't turn him to dust like a Thanos snap, Vegeta's actually going to take care of that. Did you guys know Vegeta could use keyblades? Pretty cool. And he uses one here to slice off Zamasu's hand. That was unnecessary. Actually, no, it wasn't necessary. First of all, Zamasu realizes that his arm isn't regenerating, and it hurts a lot. Ow. He has to manually heal himself, but he realizes what's happening. His immortality is gone. And the thing is here, his first thought is to escape, but he can't. That's why Vegeta went for his arm, so it would cut off his time ring and Zamasu wouldn't be able to use it. And kind of like Goten Black before, the time ring activates on its own, and it just goes back to Trunks' timeline. But instead of taking Zamasu there, it just takes his severed arm. Ew. It's like a reptile's tail or something. Now, they don't have to reserve their energy in the fight anymore, because this isn't going to be something long. The two of them plan to finish this, and they launch a combined beam that completely eradicates Zamasu. <laughs> Sucks to not be immortal, I guess. Trunks arrives at the area, and he doesn't see Zamasu anywhere. Vegeta and Gohan give him the good news. Zamasu's dead. So that should be the end of it. Well, it's not that easy. Trunks' time machine is gone, so he has to wait for that to be repaired. But once that's repaired, he can go back to his timeline, and he'll all be happy. Not so fast. There's still one thing they need to take care of. What's going to be done with Goten Black? Whis assures Trunks that he doesn't need to worry. They're going to handle Goten Black in this timeline, so Trunks can rest easy knowing this. But that means everyone in this timeline has to decide what to do with Goten Black. They could easily decide to execute him. And right after all the action's done, Goku returns after his meeting with Zeno. And the group is trying to figure out what to do with this guy. Time for some more April Fool's logic. So I'm sure Goku would probably want to try and spare him. Given who Goku is, and the theme of the scenario. Goten would probably agree too, wanting to side with his father, and also it would be a little odd trying to kill another version of himself. And Gohan would side with his family as well. But what is their plan here? Can they seriously correct him? Well, crazier things have happened before. I mean, look at Vegeta, look at Piccolo, Tenshinhan Yamcha. I mean, half the people there were enemies before. Hell, even Goku was a bad guy, until he hit his head and forgot everything, but still, people can change. Even the Zamasu in this timeline changed. And if he did, who's to say Goten Black wouldn't? He's Zamasu, and if Zamasu's open to change, Goten Black might be able to. Beerus thinks it's a crazy idea, and he's not going to help them out if anything goes south. This is their own decision, and if things get screwed up, he's not going to come in and save them. Goten Black is actually feeling a little bit mixed right now in terms of his emotions. His plan was a failure, the Zamasu that he knows is dead, and then the Zamasu in this timeline isn't even a bad guy. He's good. And now these people are sparing him, thinking that they could try and make him good? He's in a volatile state right now, so maybe they could actually reach him and get him to hear them out. He's kept contained for now, alone to his own thoughts. Trunks returns to his timeline thanking everyone, happy to finally know peace once again. Oh crap, he has to rebuild everything now. And there's a severed Zamasu arm here. Gross. How did this get in his timeline? Well, at least this is the only part of Zamasu left, and he could finally relax. While this arc is wrapped up, this leads us into the next one. And I'm not talking about the Tournament of Power, I'm talking about the time before that because there is going to be some change here. For one, of course, they do have Goten Black around. So what are they supposed to do with him? Well, Goten actually sees this as an opportunity. As weird as he thinks this is, he kind of wants to train with this guy. He knows he's stronger right now, so if anything goes wrong, he could just kill Goten Black easily. But he also feels like this will be a good experience for the both of them. It'll get him to be stronger, and maybe he can get Goten Black to see the light and actually become good. Goku hasn't just taught him everything in terms of fighting. He's also taught Goten how to be a good person, and he wants to see if he could spread that here. Goku was able to influence other enemies to be good. He just has that kind of effect on people. The androids, Vegeta, Tenshinhan, Yamcha, Piccolo. And I know this what-if has had a lot of jokes, and I mean the whole concept of Goten Black turning good is crazy, but to get a little bit serious here, if Goten's training like Goku, that's going to affect his mentality a little bit, in a good way. And if he truly wants to be like Goku as a fighter, he needs to learn how to influence people in good ways like that. And Goten Black would be a nice start. It will be a true test for Goten's maturity, showing that he not only developed in terms of strength here, but also as a person. It's going to be a hard process, but he feels confident that he can do it. And even though it's Zamasu in there, maybe he'll be able to have Goten show up somewhere. Who knows though. Goten Black is freed, and the two of them actually begin training. He still has a hatred for mortals, sure. But this experience is kind of opening his eyes. A mortal spared him. Despite all the havoc he caused and the fact that he failed, this mortal right here, this kid who's not even fully developed as a person, he's giving him a second chance. Not only that, but training with him. Zamasu's had the idea that mortals make everything impure, and they just destroy stuff that's beautiful. But Goten's different. He's trying to do good and create stuff. Positive things like a bond between the two of them. And you know what? He wants to give that a chance. Goten Black begins warming up to Goten. 
It's a very slow process, but it works. Plus, the two of them do get stronger. Goten Black's even able to learn Super Saiyan eventually. And he tries to get Super Saiyan Blue, but when he does it, it turns out being pink. Weird, but he doesn't question it. Still seems cool. And all of this training is done on Beerus' planet, while Goku and Vegeta are also there. Beerus and Whis are pretty impressed with this kid. He's developed a lot. Of course, Goku's proud as well. And you know what? Vegeta's proud, but he's a bit jealous. Why can't his kid do this? You know what? That's it. Beerus has been playing favorites. He wants Trunks to be here too. Vegeta's turning to one of those dads that will have a bumper sticker on his car, talking about how great his honor student child is. Screw school, he wants Trunks to get Super Saiyan Blue. By now, Goten and Goten Black are basically best bros. After all the time they spent training together, and with how Goten Black is learning as a person, or a Saiyan, or a Kai in a Saiyan's body, I don't know. But with all that Goten Black's been learning from Goten, he's become a real good influence and they've grown pretty close. Ironically, not only is he Goten physically, but he's becoming more like Goten mentally but still with that Zamasu in there somewhere. Goten himself has also finally aged up, due to the room spirit and time training from before, and another year passing after that. So what does this mean besides him getting a new design? Well, not much, except the fact that Gotenks isn't possible anymore, at least for the time being. I mean, technically he could try fusion with Goten Black. is probably not the best idea because he's still a Kai, and that doesn't sound like a smart idea, but I guess the fusion dance could work. What would that fusion even be called? That's besides the point though. Really, we could just use this as a segue to transition into talking about Trunks, the other part of Gotenks. So what's Trunks been up to? Well, due to Vegeta wanting him to be training here, he actually started training on Beerus' planet. Trunks has been training a lot with Whis to catch up with Goten, and he is very far behind, but he's making some great progress. I mean, with the year of training at this point, it's not unlikely for him to have at least Super Saiyan God. For Vegeta, he's pretty proud. His son is a god. Cool. As for Gohan, who we touched briefly before, he's a little bummed out on Earth. He wishes he had enough free time to go to Beerus' planet and train, but he can't just up and leave Earth and his family. That'll take too much time. I mean, he has been training with Ultimate, but he doesn't have enough time to train like everyone else is. Wait a second. Not enough time. How did he not think of this before? They have a solution for that. Gohan comes up with a new ski, and it's a good timing too because around this time, the Tournament of Power is going to be announced. And overall here, the team would mostly be the same with the exception of Frieza not being needed, as well as Tenshinhan and Roshi not joining, because they have three new members, Goten, Trunks, and Goten Black. Wait, are they crazy? Goten Black can't join. Goku thinks it would be a pretty great idea, but yeah, Beerus is right. They should probably check with Zeno first, and Zeno is very lenient with these kind of things. Goten Black technically isn't a Kai anymore, and he is a resident of Universe 7 now. Zeno doesn't really care too much. He thinks it would be fun if Goten Black were in the tournament, so he lets him join. Sweet, that's another powerful member that they have. And it's good because the Zen Exhibition match is coming up, with Goku and the two Gotens joining. This is the first test of their real power, and the improvement is noticeable. To put it in short terms, the trio of danger is pretty screwed. Goku would probably still fight Topo here as well, and even in this fight Goku would be able to do better, possibly even being able to win. The tournament's shaping up to be really fun. But back on Earth, Goku needs to catch up with someone. He wants to test Gohan's power too. He's pretty surprised to find out that Gohan actually did some training in the Room of Spirit in time, not to mention he was doing more training than normal, and he actually retained his ultimate form here. Thanks to Piccolo being around to help teach him, they both got some really good training in. I feel like Gohan still wouldn't pursue Super Saiyan God, because just like in the normal series, he'd probably end up sticking with Ultimate wanting to go to his human side. To be fair, he's already powerful enough with it. Ultimate Gohan here, especially with all the extra training he's got, well, he's gonna be overpowered. And if you couldn't tell by now, pretty much all of Universe 7's team is overpowered. They're really confident. Three Super Saiyan Blues, Goten Black, Trunks, Gohan, and all these other strong fighters. They're pumped up and they head to the tournament. But before the tournament starts, I want to note something. You may remember last time I mentioned, Zamasu actually survived here, present Zamasu, and he's in the stands here watching the tournament. And of course, he ends up seeing Goten Black in the arena. Wait, what? Did this mean he could have joined his own Universe 10 team? He strikes up a conversation with Goten Black mentally, with Goasu too. It's kind of like a conference call from their brains. The two of them actually catch up with each other. I mean, it's weird because it's both Zamasu's talking to each other. Goten Black tells Zamasu he's had some life-changing experiences and says it's a good thing that they both listened. They could have ended up dead, but now they're both on the path to good. Goten Black is living as basically a fake mortal now. Sure, he's technically still a god, but in terms of him not having the responsibilities of a deity, and he actually really enjoys this life. He even has a mortal friend now, and is learning more about the mortals. Actually, he's been in talks with Shin. He wants to try and help guide Universe 7 to being a better place, and help raise the mortal level. Even if he doesn't have the responsibilities of a deity, he could still help. 
Zamasu is very happy to hear this, and he takes notes from Goten Black, or I mean himself I guess. It's a good thing that instead of destroying the universe, they're actually helping it out here. Goasu is obviously pretty pleased as well. Good thing he doesn't have to worry about dying. Well hopefully. The tournament itself begins, and let's just say the other universes aren't so lucky. Universe 9 suffers some really quick eliminations, ripped to the trio of danger, but as for Universe 7, they're chilling. Everything is extremely cash money for them. Left and right, they're just pimp slapping people out of the ring. And besides Universe 11, pretty much everyone else is scared out of their minds. A few of them even try to fight Trunks. It doesn't go well for them. Just because he's a kid doesn't mean they should underestimate him. And for Trunks, it's pretty fun. This is way better than being in the junior division in the tournament on Earth. There's actually a challenge here. Goten would most likely stick with Goten Black a lot. They would have a very similar fighting style, and after all their training together, it only makes sense. Gohan and Piccolo obviously would be together a lot, same with Android 17, 18, and Krillin. And while Goku and Vegeta are mostly separate, Trunks normally hangs around them. And by sticking together like this, they're able to do a lot better in packs. And eventually we get to the point where Goku faces against Jiren, and a lot of that goes similar. But after Goku loses Ultra Instinct, Goten Black walks up to him. He's amazed about what Goku just did, and begins theorizing. He thinks that this is Ultra Instinct, and he begins explaining what little he knows about it. And he notices Goku's very worn down now. He gives him some energy in hopes that he could see this form again. And he himself begins thinking, can he do this? Possibly Vegeta and Goten can as well. He's beginning to realize this is what Whis had them training for. After hearing what Goten Black told him, Goku's even more excited to try this form again. Goten Black gave him some pretty good advice about it too. And with Whis's help from the stands, Goku will be able to get some guidance in actually accessing this form once again, leading him in the right direction. And while all this is going on, Goten is with Gohan, fighting Universe 2. Or at least what's left of it. Needless to say, it's a little odd for Gohan. Goten is now suddenly an adult. They're the same size. This gives Gohan some deja vu. Hasn't he seen this somewhere before? Yes, I'm plugging another one of my series, I'll link it up here. I had to take the opportunity. But jokes aside, it's nice fighting alongside Goten once again. Goten's pretty amazed to see how strong Gohan's gotten, and vice versa. Yeah, it's pretty great for them, but it's not so great for Universe 2. Sucks for them. Ripped my wife. Anywho, the tournament continued. Obviously. And Goku's currently fighting Kale and Cauliflower. Luckily for them, after Kaba's encounter with Goten, he actually did end up training for Super Saiyan, and that went towards them as well. So, yay for them, they got Super Saiyan here. And knowing the two of them, they probably also have Super Saiyan 2 like normal. But this time around, they're having a lot more trouble against Goku. Yeah, they did originally, but even more so here with how strong Goku is. But, they have one last resort. They pull out their Patara earrings and fuse into Kefla. Too bad for them, by doing this, they make Goku go Ultra Instinct again. But what changes here is actually, Goku's kind of getting the hang of it. No, it's not like he's going to master it right away, but using the little info that Goten Black had, and what Whis was saying, Goku's kind of getting the hang of this form. And it's actually pretty easy for him to defeat Kefla this time. Not only is Kefla weaker, and not only is Goku stronger, but with his extra control over Ultra Instinct, it's really a cakewalk against Kefla. And even briefly after he defeats Kefla, he's still holding on to Ultra Instinct, trying to get the feeling of it ingrained within his mind. Goten Black immediately goes over to him, amazed to see this, but he could tell Goku's struggling with it. He congratulates Goku for his progress, but he could tell Goku still has a long way to go. But this is a good start. Goku tries his hardest to clear his mind, and subconsciously maintain this form, but he can't, and eventually drops out of it. But he's not so drained from dropping out of it this time. Goten Black can tell he's making some great progress. Can this mortal actually act as a technique like this? Only time will tell. All of Universe 3's fighters fuse into this giant robot. They're sure to win, aren't they? Oh, this is going to be an interesting fight, and he gets eliminated instantly. Dang! Well, he actually got to take Piccolo out while he was at it. But still, sucks to suck. At this point, Universe 7's lost people like Piccolo, Android 18, and Krillin. And Trunks realizes that the tournament's heating up, so he has to step up his game. Specifically when they're facing Aniraza. I mean, this helps, but everyone's already overpowering Aniraza a lot. But Trunks takes the opportunity to show off something new he has, something cool. He begins powering up. And Vegeta already knows what's coming. Trunks' aura surrounds him and he drops out of God, changing into something else. Trunks is Super Saiyan Blue. Goten already expected this, and he's pretty glad to see his friend do this. And Vegeta is, of course, very, very proud of his son. And after Aniraza is defeated, he even gloats about it to Jiren once they're facing him. Look at his boy. He's blue. How awesome. Jiren does not care what color his hair is, and he just punches Goku and Vegeta in the face. Goten and Gohan team up once more to face Dispo. Rest in peace, Dispo. I'm sorry, but the Sun Brothers are overpowered. Great synergy, great power, and everything else they need. And all the while, Goten Black's kind of on his own, and he's facing off against Topo in the meantime. He remembers Topo from the exhibition match, and could tell something was different with him. 
quickly he's able to learn. Topo is a candidate for the God of Destruction for Universe 11. Interesting, and Goten Black reveals his past as well. A former apprentice Kai versus a candidate God of Destruction. It should be fun. Goten Black jumps into Rose while Topo goes into his God mode. In terms of power, the two are very close to each other, but I feel like Goten Black has the edge. The two are both really strong regardless, and Goten Black is intrigued to see the perspective of a God of Destruction candidate. Weirdly enough, this might even spark up a rivalry between them. Goten Black enjoys the fight, especially since it's with another god. He promises Topo during their fight, he wants to see him again. And if Universe 7 wins, he's gonna restore all the universes to do this. Topo's actually pretty shocked to hear this, but he agrees, promising the same. Although he doesn't know what Jiren's gonna want to wish for because he most likely will get the wish. But nonetheless, the two enjoy their fight. Thankfully, Topo doesn't know that Goten Black used to be a bad guy, otherwise he'd want to serve justice and wouldn't want to have a friendly rivalry. Goten Black wins this, and the tournament continues, or what's left of it. Right now it's just Jiren versus basically everyone else left in Universe 7. Jiren begins fighting more effectively, and more seriously, being able to knock out Trunks in 17. That was pretty easy. And next he goes for Goten, since he knows Goten just knocked out Dispa, meaning he's not someone to be played with. But Gohan jumps in to defend him, and Gohan tries to put up a fight against Jiren, but he can't, and gets knocked out while protecting Goten. Attacking pretty much everyone in Universe 7 now, Jiren goes after Goten Black next, another powerful god that he needs to get rid of. It's a similar case with Gohan, and Goten Black is knocked out of the ring. Except, as he's falling into the void, he grins. He puts his fingers on his forehead and teleports back into the arena. From Goku, Goten was able to learn engine transmission a while back, and so was Goten Black. This is huge for them, because if it means at least one person stays in the ring, Goku, Goten, or Goten Black could just teleport in whenever they want. Annoyed, Jiren begins powering up against Goten Black, trying to knock him out. He keeps beating on Goten Black and throwing him out of the ring, but Goten Black keeps on teleporting back in. Slowly but surely, he gets more annoyed. Goten Black is mocking him, even though he's all badly beaten right now. Goten Black is still trying to annoy Jiren while he defends everyone else. Letting out more power, Jiren wants to finish this, and knocks Goten Black out of the ring. But before he could teleport back in, he spikes him down into the void sending him over to the threshold before he can even instant transmission again. Goten Black's happy. He was able to buy some time for everyone else, because now, Goku, Vegeta, and Goten are the last hope. They've recovered a bit of their energy, but things still look bad. Right now, Jiren is beating on them, heavily holding back. The three desperately try to fight, but they can't. Jiren prepares to knock out Goten. He knocked out that clone of him before, so now he's gonna knock out the real one. He winds up a punch, flinging it towards Goten. But unexpectedly, it seems to just go through Goten. Jiren punches again, but Goten dodges. Goku watches and realizes what's happening. Honestly, he's not too surprised. Goten did train just like him, after all. And that training's paid off, because right now, Goten enters Ultra Instinct Omen. He's actually holding off Jiren a bit, although he's still having trouble. Goku wants to help out, but he doesn't know how to tap into Ultra Instinct at will. But he begins focusing and trying to remember what Goten Black was telling him before, and recalling his experience and the feeling of Ultra Instinct. Goku is calming himself emptying his heart and mind. Vegeta, barely able to stand, watches this. Can Kakarot actually do it? Goku breathes in. His mind is calm. His heart is calm. And similar to how it happened in the manga, Goku taps into Ultra Instinct once again. Except this time, he has white hair for some reason. Goten and Jiren notice this as Goku enters the fight. Together, the Ultra Instinct father and son duo defeat Jiren, saving Universe 7 and winning the tournament. Vegeta watched the whole thing go down and he's pretty jealous, needless to say. Trunks better get that form next. They won't allow the Sun family to get ahead of them. Goten, Black, and Whis are pretty happy. Black wants to pursue the form himself. And as for Whis, two of his students just got Ultra Instinct. This is huge. He hopes that Vegeta, Goten, Black, and maybe even Trunks will achieve this one day. But it's obviously going to take some training for all of them. Same for Goku and Goten if they want to tap into it once more. And my man Goku becomes MVP. Nice. So, what happens now? Well, really nothing. Earth returns to peace. There's no Broly here, and Moro would probably get involved, but I mean, come on, he's gonna be facing Goku, Vegeta, Goten, and Goten Black. And yeah, they just serve as energy sources for him, but with four powerhouses in one place, they have a real good shot at defeating Moro, and that arc could probably just be negated before it even starts. Not to mention that arc is complete, so I can't cover it anyways. Which means, the series ends here. Overall, I think it was pretty fun for an April Fool's what if. We got to get a little bit outlandish with it, and we saw some interesting developments, so I want you guys to let me know. What did you think about this scenario, and this part too? What was your favorite thing here? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below, and I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like, and if you haven't already, why not subscribe, as well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future videos I upload on my channel. 
Thank you all for watching, thank you for supporting the scenario, and I'll see you on my next video.